everybody, my name is Kaden King and welcome back to my channel where I tell creepy reddit stories for your entertainment because clearly I've got nothing else to do with my life. Anyway, I'm an author if anyone wants to buy my book. <laughs> if you guys enjoy these videos, please leave a like, subscribe and enjoy the video. So I used to have tons of little paranormal experiences up until I turned 18. Then they just stopped. Nothing for nearly 20 years. Then about 6 months ago I started getting super interested in the paranormal again. And I've been either reading people's experiences here or listening to podcasts. And things have started to happen again. I believe the more attention you give to the paranormal, even indirectly by reading about others' experiences, can give them enough energy to interact with you. Some backstory before I get into my latest happenings. I started dating my ex-wife in 2009. We moved into our house in 2010-2011. Her family owned it before us, so she grew up in it basically. They always believed there was a presence in the house, but apart from a dumb teenage girl moment with a friend claiming to be sensitive or another girl claiming to see something, no real experiences ever happened. But as adults, when we moved in, we always sensed something here. Not really malevolent, but powerful enough of a presence to put you and sometimes also company at unease. But for literally a decade, zero actual experiences, nothing unexplainable. Even when talking about the paranormal, and even making jokes and subconsciously trying to stir something up out of sheer curiosity, then in 2020, we separate and I move out. In this new place, I occasionally feel a small presence. I chalk it up to either imagination or maybe there's someone watching over me. Who really knows what's there, which we can't see? We can only speculate. I cut to six months ago when I started to get super drawn to the paranormal again and I began reading people's stories literally every night in bed as I wind down to sleep. In my story before I shared here about my experience with the black horseman I mentioned when I talked about the paranormal it seems to as I call it stir shit up. As in if you give them attention they would feed off the energy enough to actually interact with you somehow. Now that I'm giving more attention to this world we know so little about once again. It seems the same thing is happening all over again. I'm starting to feel the presences much stronger. Weird for sure, but I continue. Then around October, I have a new experience. I was in the basement bedroom, only two floors. The stairs are ridiculously loud. You can always hear them, even over the TV or music, even when you try to be sneaky. They're just damn loud. One morning around 6, 18 a.m., I remember exactly because my morning ritual is I wake up before any other roommate, get dressed and relax on my couch playing on my phone until 6.30 when I walk out to leave for work or before my roommate wakes up for their routine. I am in my room sitting on my couch looking at my phone waiting on the time to leave. Dead silence in the entire house, sitting on the couch in my room facing my open bedroom door. Suddenly I hear the loud creaky stairs as something slowly walks down to the basement all 13 steps. I think this is very odd as I watch the doorway into the hall. There's no reason for anyone upstairs to come down here. They have their own bathroom up there and nobody gets up before me. But I think maybe it's a roommate coming to talk to me before I leave. I wait about one to two minutes. No sounds, no lights turn on or off. Then the same loud steps back upstairs. Then the weird part. If anyone is walking upstairs, I hear them. At all times. The floor is absurdly loud and creaky. So if someone goes upstairs, you immediately hear where they walk to afterwards also. This time immediately silent after the steps up, which is impossible. I even tested it with a roommate later that day. Also when I came home, I asked each roommate if they were up during that specific time frame. They were not. I did everything in my power to explain it away. There is zero logic to disprove it. I tried. Next experience. I and my ex-wife are still friends. She's still in our old house, but getting ready to sell it and move to another state. Her to a new state with her new boyfriend and I to my home state. So we decided since her roommates are moving out and we have to work to do to get ready to sell, I would move back in since I'd be there so often anyway and we'd get along well enough. Immediately the presence in that house is stronger than I'd ever felt it before I left. Every night. I'm still reading and listening to stories and podcasts in bed, getting very creeped out, dumb and brave, I continue anyway. 
One evening, I go with my ex-wife to help do janitorial service at a church for a mutual friend, which she does on occasion for some side cash. She's been doing so for months and asked me to come with this time because she hates going there alone because she thinks it's haunted and gets spooked out. There is a specific room she hates and feels like there's always a presence in that room and it makes her extremely uneasy. A friend was hanging out with us and decided to tag along. So we get there and she asks me to handle that room because I don't rattle easily. So she's in the bathroom. The friend is just standing in the hall talking to us. I'm in the hall running an extension cord and I walk past the door to that particular room. I look at our friend as he turns sheet white and as I walk past it, the door slowly opened even though it was locked solid. I had literally just barely asked my wife to come unlock it for me, so I could vacuum it, so I know for a fact it was just locked. Take that as you will, just the door coming unlatched or paranormal, but it felt unlikely it just unlatched, as it is a heavy, solid door with a sturdy lock. They lock every door in this church for whatever reason. Anyway, I tried recording some audio in the room alone a couple times, hoping to catch something, but I've captured nothing so far. I'll keep trying whenever I get a chance. I also say, you are not allowed to follow us home or attach yourself to us, and you are not allowed to feed off our energy before we leave the church every time. Third experience. First week of December, ex-wife has gone out of town with her new boyfriend, leaving me alone in the house for a couple months. A buddy of mine who is pretty sensitive to spirits and such is visiting, and we end up talking about the paranormal, and I bring up the strong presence here which was felt significantly stronger since being alone. He mentions he's felt something watching us from the kitchen the whole time that evening and nervously changed the subject. That night I go to bed, read some stories here, get all spooked and get sleepy, put my phone on the charger, turn off the lights and lay down. I'm still very much awake after only about a minute or two since turning off the lights when I feel something clear as can be pat on the bed next to my foot as if someone took their open palm and just firmly went. I am most definitely alone in this house. There is no way it was another person. I calmly said, do not mess with me while I'm in bed, and you are not allowed to feed off my energy, and please respect my home and my boundaries. I tried not to freak out as I tucked the blanket under my body as if it was a protective shield and eventually went to sleep. After that, I don't read the spookies every night anymore. Shit needs to calm down until I'm at least not home alone. But here I am, typing this at midnight, when I should be going to sleep. Home alone, still. So I guess we'll see if I have another one to report soon. Our previous house is haunted. It wasn't exactly something scary, nor too big of a deal. But the story behind it is terrifying. The house was bought ages ago, by ages we mean 1950s. It's the third house built in that suburbs. That's why our address is Lot 3. There's a historical record of the people who live in each house ever since. And I was able to trace back up to 1965. The documents that date back to the 1940s and further in the library are too blurry to see, but makeable. We just really want to clean the place up since it's been rented. But I don't want to visit that place ever again anymore. The records show of a woman who had a daughter and a husband. She was a seamstress and the husband was an industrial worker. She was 27 years old the last time I saw and her daughter is 4 years old. No pictures were there, just records to see. The house is elevated. It has a small flower bed below the house with spiky metal fences. The house is made out of very strong wood and so it was good to begin with. If we ever get the feeling that someone's in the house then it's probably a ghost, because it wasn't exactly harmful or anything. It was just creepy to be honest. But that's just the surface. Checking on the records, one of the families still alive during the time was someone I knew, an old man living in front from us. I wanted to know the story of the woman who lived before us. At first he was actually hesitant to tell me, and I should have listened, because after what I heard was shocking. The woman was knitting through garments, her husband was at the roof trying to fix something. Her daughter is with her. Her husband asked for something needed at the rooftop, so she kept the door open. The tool was in the back of the kitchen. Her husband was just busy checking the roof. And then they heard someone scream. The mother quickly rushed to see what was going on, and she saw her child's impaled head on the metal fence below. 
Two days later, devastated by the fact that their child is gone, she hanged herself. While well, the husband shot himself a few days after that. I should tell you, this is not the terrifying bit. But if you want to stop here, you should. Because this is just something only I was able to see. After I heard the story, I checked the house and tried to stay there. It was just me and my dad, though. We just finished cleaning the entire house, so we figured we'd take some rest. My father went to his friend, and I was staying in the house. I can't go too far, because the house would be left open. A few moments later, I walked into the former bedroom, and suddenly my vision got dark. My head was scratching itself onto something, and I felt a hard knock on a part of my skull, as well as something that's choking me, and a sharp dull pain at the back of my throat. It was the most excruciating pain I have ever felt for like 5 seconds, and after that I felt weak and fell to the ground, scared to go inside the bedroom further. As soon as I got out of the bedroom, the main door closed in on itself, and then I felt it again. A hard knock on the skull, something that chokes me in a sharp pain in the back of my throat. I tried to stay calm, but the pain was longer than it should be. I can't see much, I can't move, I can't speak. Then suddenly, the pain gradually moved out and I collapsed. And that's not all. This is the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I relived their memory. The exact tragedy was burned into my head like I was there. In that moment. The moment I got impaled, hanged and shot. It was the most frightening thing of my life. Being in their perspective, dying three times and reliving the exact moment of their lives. When I woke up, I didn't feel anything. My father told me I was asleep and that he'd just arrived. Out of fright, I cried that day. My dad said I was probably just daydreaming, but comforted me, nonetheless. So it was something I can't ever tell to anyone, because no one would believe me. The next day, the old man that I questioned for answers with died of a stroke. I never knew why, but the coincidence is too much to leave as his fate, but I digress. It was something I don't want to experience again, so I'm leaving it at that. Okay, so last year in October, my partner and I drove down to Norwich, UK, to pick up our new dog. I booked Sprouse down Manor Hotel because it was dog friendly and all around has good reviews. The first night around 1am, I decided to go to sleep. My partner already snoring next to me. I lay down and my head started spinning. I suddenly felt violently sick and roasting hot and drenched in sweat. I tried to get up to go to the bathroom, but the whole room was spinning and I couldn't walk. I ended up crawling to the toilet, being sick and dragging myself back to bed, where I must have eventually fell asleep. The next morning I was sick until we left the hotel, couldn't eat breakfast, but the minute we were in the car and off the grounds, I felt weirdly normal again. That night the exact same, but our new dog now growling at the door and having to guide me to the bathroom. Thankfully we went home the next morning and I quickly searched the hotel to find that above our room children died in a fire. 100 to 200 years before. Has anyone any experience with this or any ideas? Never stop thinking about it. My grandmother passed when I was five, and when she died, she told me and my siblings, I'll leave you dimes and pennies. I didn't understand what she was meaning, of course, as I was a child. After she passed, I would find dimes randomly around my room. Not thinking much of it, I would just pick them up and go on about my day. Until one day I was pissed off at my parents. Can't remember why. I must be seven or eight. I was in my living room, laying on the floor, just cussing up a storm as quiet as I could be, so I didn't get into more trouble. When out of absolutely thin air, a dime falls and slaps me right in the forehead. I sat up thinking it was my brother or something, trying to mess with me, when I realized no one is around. It freaked me out. I got up and went to my room, trying not to focus on it much. It started happening more and more, but only when I was angry. My grandmother was always good at calming me down. I thought I was crazy until I was with my friend, pissed off, and she heard dime fall. She was shook. I don't know how to explain it, if it's even possible, but I'm convinced my grandmother leaves me dimes, and I don't have any other explanation. The story takes place back on Valentine's Day 2010. I would have been 11 at the time. My dad bought me a puppy plushie with a red ribbon and a little felt heart that said I love you in capital letters. My parents had to leave to get groceries for dinner and I stayed home because I was running a fever. I took some medicine and went back to bed. 
I specifically remember leaving that dog plushie on the kitchen table before I went to bed. I woke up a couple hours later to my parents arriving home. That little dog plushie was sitting by my head and my bedroom door was wide open. It couldn't have been my parents who moved it since they left before I went to bed and only just unlocked the door when I walked into the living room. My brother was at boot camp so it couldn't have been him. My bedroom has always been a hot spot for activity, but this event in particular still perplexes me. We had at least two entities in that house. One that wandered the residence and looked like a man with a blurred face, and the other I have never seen but felt constantly after all had resided in my room. I told a friend this story once, and think it might have been the one from my room since after this event I saw seeing a dark hunched over figure staring at me from behind furniture and around corners. Anyone know what could have happened? I started seeing ghosts when I was a kid. First memory I have is going to an elderly neighbor's house with my mom when I was about five. As we were walking to her house, I saw this elderly man standing in her garden. He smiled and appeared friendly. My mom walked on by him without saying a word. He never said anything either. I thought it was strange, but didn't say anything. We got inside the house and was chatting with the neighbor when I saw him in the hallway to the living room. He was watching us and smiling and not saying anything. I saw a photo of him in the living room with the neighbor lady, so I figured he must live there. Still, I noticed no one looked at him or said anything to him. Finally, the curiosity got the best of me, and I said, Who is that man in the hallway smiling and looking at us? My mom and neighbor said no one was there, and looked at me confused. I said, The man in the picture is standing in the kitchen smiling at us, and no one is saying anything to him. They told me it was impossible because that was her husband, but and Bud died two weeks ago, and that was why my mom came to visit her. Second time was when I was visiting my uncle's house. He and his wife had just gotten a water bed, which was popular at the time. He was showing it to my mom and I. As we walked up the stairs to their bedroom, I saw this man who appeared to be in his late twenties slash early thirties, sandy blonde hair, wearing only boxer shorts, pacing back and forth in the upstairs hallway. We walked right by him, and again, no one but me looked or said anything to him. I thought that was strange. He continued to walk back and forth on that strip of hallway, outside the door and even looked in the room at us a few times. Again, I was curious about what was going on, so I asked my mom and uncle, who was the man walking around in the hallway. They looked confused. My uncle said no one should be here. Let me go look. He comes back a few minutes later and said he saw no one. I said, he is still outside the door. My uncle got quiet for a minute, sighed and said, well, He's harmless then. Don't worry about it. My mom, even more concerned, asked my uncle what he meant by that, and what was going on. My uncle said that my cousin, who is the same age as me, had also reported seeing a man in their house. My uncle said he would tell my mom more about it, and we went downstairs. They made me play outside while they talked. I found out years later from my mom that my cousin, who also saw the man, was not believed by his parents at first that it was anything other than an imaginary friend. That was until my cousin started saying that the man lived in that house and wanted to know why we were there. My aunt took him to a psychologist and everything. She eventually did some research on the house and discovered that a man in his early 30s had committed suicide in that house in the early 80s, a few years before they bought it. Also, when my cousin's younger brother was old enough to talk, he also began reporting that he too saw the man and was absolutely terrified of him because he said he would come into their room. He was so terrified he didn't want to sleep by himself. He refused to sleep in his bedroom. Another ghost sighting happened a few years later when I was about eight or nine. My brother and I used to play near a creek in the backyard. Across the creek was an old house. The kind looking old man would come outside the house and watch us play, but never said a word to us. He seemed to really enjoy watching us play. He didn't seem weird at all. He seemed to be a genuinely nice guy. He had white hair, was very fair skin, skinny, and always wore the same dress clothes, a button-up beige dress shirt, and dark brown dress pants, and dress shoes. The thing that made me begin to feel uneasy was the fact that my outgoing brother never acknowledged the old man. He never looked in his direction, nor said a word. See, I didn't notice this the first few times we played back there, and never thought anything weird because the man seemed harmless. One day I finally got the courage to ask my brother if he saw the man sitting there on the porch. We were very close to the house, 
so he could clearly see anything that was there. My brother looked up and around and asked me if I was messing with him and trying to scare him. I couldn't believe it. There the man was, as clear as day, and yet I was the only one who saw him. I told my brother I was going back to the house and he should come with me. He didn't. So I went to the house and asked my mom who lived in that house. She said that no one lived in that house for years. I told her about the old man and she said to get my brother and not go back there until her and my dad checked it out. I never saw him again. The story doesn't end there though. It gets even more creepy. A few years later, family moved into that house. We made friends with the two girls who lived there. One day, the oldest girl told us that their house was haunted. They said that they heard their cabinet doors in the kitchen open and close at night, sometimes, and no one would be there, and the light switches would turn on and off. She said that her younger sister, she said, saw the ghost and described him as an older gentleman and said his name was Frank and that he lived in that house. The family eventually moved away not too long after that. Years later, I was walking with my grandma at the cemetery above our house and she commented that this grave we went by was that of the neighbor who used to live behind our house. He died in the 1960s when my dad was a baby. According to his tombstone, he was 62 when he died. His first name? Frank. I asked my grandma if he was a fair skinned, white haired, slim looking man and she said yes. And asked if I had seen a picture of him. I told her the story. It creeps her out too. I had a strange experience when I had my first job. I was 19 and working night shift at a house taking care of several disabled people who couldn't talk, walk or do anything on their own. I was washing dishes when I looked up and saw what I thought was my co-worker walking into one of the client's rooms to check on them. I wanted to speak with her so I followed her into the room and there was no one there but the client who was sleeping in the bed. I looked out the window of the room and saw my co-worker outside fixing another co-worker's car. They were both outside. I honestly wasn't paying close attention to the woman I saw who walked into the bedroom. I just noticed she had short hair and was about the same height as my co-worker. When my co-worker came back inside, I told her that I could have sworn I saw her walk into the bedroom and so I followed her and that no one was in there. I thought I was losing my mind. My co-workers looked at me and said what I saw wasn't unusual or the first person claiming to see a woman in that house. Apparently that place had been the scene of a double homicide many years ago. A man and woman were shot to death while they slept in their bed. Many people apparently have reported seeing what they believe to be the woman's ghost. When I was younger, about four or five, I would talk to ghosts. I was only told this by my parents recently. They told me that I would always talk to a man that stood in front of my bedroom window and when asked who I was talking to, I would apply with George. Obviously I was only four or five at the time. I have no memory of what I would talk about. But we lived next to an old man called Mr. Todd, who my parents were close to. My mom ended up asking who lived in the house before us and surely enough he replied with George. When my mom asked him if he has anything to do with the bedroom window, as that's where I would always talk to him, Mr. Todd said that he would always stand at the window just looking out of it and that's how he would spend most of his days. I've been told that I was a very weird child growing up and that story isn't the only ghost I would talk to. As my parents describe it, I would always talk to a man on top of the wardrobe. Unfortunately, I haven't been told much about this one as it's always overshadowed by the George story. I would also go on about having a past life and how I would bring up my other family. I have a feeling that I had a past life in the time frame of World War I or World War II. My reasoning is that my older brother, seven years older, told me that one day I started singing an old war song, word for word, which neither my parents or brother had ever heard before. Being a believer of past lives, I find it fascinating as I've had my own experience of it, yet frustrating that I was so young that my memory of it all is limited. And that's it for the video. If you guys liked it, please give it a like, subscribe, don't forget to comment down which one you liked the most. If you like these kind of stories, I am a horror writer and I do have a book available down below in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's also a link for that. If you have any other particular stories you guys would like me to talk about one day, please let me know and I will do that. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.